Coming to you straight from the Rio Grande and beyond and beyond broadcasting to the four corners of the globe so grab your seat your coffee or your sundowner okay everybody here we go on point as always this is gloves off gloves off get up early work hard my parents said this to us every day as they left for las piscas and it's what I'll do every day for South Texas. Build relationships with both parties and deliver. By passing middle class tax cuts, creating thousands of jobs, lowering the cost of health care, and fully funding law enforcement and border security. While people in Washington fight each other, who will fight for us? I will. I'm Henry Quayat, and I approve this message. Back at you in Gloves Off, and I'm here with State Representative Richard Raymond. We're touching base on everything campaign and all the good stuff. It's, it's, it's a, a pleasure. Good to be with you. It's a pleasure. Yes, uh, sir. How's the campaign coming along? Well, I feel good. I mean, we've been campaigning hard, getting out there, trying to get people engaged in the par process. Uh, you know, we had about uh, 15,000 people, I think, vote overall, countywide, uh, through early vote, which ended Friday. Obviously, I, I would like for it to be higher, you know, and uh, tomorrow will be election day, and I encourage everybody to go vote. I mean. Uh, we were talking about this, you and I, but you know, we see what's going on the other side of the world where people in Ukraine are fighting for their freedom, for their democracy. Uh, they've been invaded by Russia. They're, you know, their army is standing strong, the Ukrainian army, but the Ukrainian people are standing up and fighting. You know, they're joining the fight. And, uh, you know, so we have a chance to vote here and send the message about freedom and democracy that we have in this country. And, uh, I, you know, I wish more people would go vote. I hope uh, tomorrow a lot of people will go vote. Exactly. You made, a, you made a great point. You know, people are fighting for freedom. Yes. Elsewhere, you know, they're gonna, you know, if Russia goes in there, it's going to be a total different yeah. entity. Yeah. And uh, here, people do not take advantage of the rights to vote. Too many of them, they just take it for granted. And they shouldn't. They should think about all the veterans who have given their lives, you know, um, so that we would have these freedoms that we have. All the people that came before us who have given their lives and, and, and you know, um, and then for us not to go vote. Uh, I always tell people, look, I want you to vote for me. I want to work for you. I want, you know, I, I, I think it's a privilege to represent my community at the state capitol. But more importantly than that, it's just go vote. Go vote. I'm not going to ask you who you vote. Go vote. That's what we want. That's what we need. Absolutely. And, well, tomorrow's early vote. No, tomorrow's vote. Election day. Election yeah. day. And how many do you expect of people coming out more? You know, I don't know, Paul. I mean, it's hard to say. We had 15,000 in the primary, I mean, the, in the early vote. Um, a lot of times, Election Day can double that, you know. Um, I hope it will double that. I hope it's more than that. I remember at first, when you had early vote, more people would vote on Election Day than early vote, and then it started kind of evening out, about half and half, and then started changing to where more people voted early vote than on Election Day. Um, so I don't know, you know, I don't know what's going to, I won't even put a guess on it because I don't know. I know what I hope. I hope that we, we have at least as many people vote tomorrow on election day as voted during early vote. Because I think we have about 125,000 registered voters in Laredo and so far 15,000 have voted. I mean, that's, that's not good. No, it's not good. So, and it's not good. And it's, yeah. you know, I've been talking to my son, my son's 17 and be uh, 18 in, in September. Yeah. You know, God bless his soul. And, and we've been talking about it. I go, you're going to, no, you know, you have to register to vote. Yeah, November, he'll get to vote. You have to register for, you know, so he's been asking about what's this, what's that. Yeah, yeah. And that's just the way it is. You have to get your kids involved. You have to teach Absolutely. them. Absolutely. We, we need to do a better job of teaching our kids early on the, the importance, you know, it's like, you know, they get old enough and we're certainly teaching them how to drive and they want to learn how to drive. They think that's really important. Okay. I promise you. Driving is not important than having a, a freedom, a free democracy, right? The right to vote is much more important than the right to drive, I can tell you. And so I think we do have to sort of change from the beginning with, with new generations and tell them from the very beginning, it's your duty, it's your responsibility to go vote. Because if they do that, Paul, what happens is they will become better citizens because they're going to study things more, like your son be asking you questions more about the process or about certain political candidates or about what they stand for, etc. 
So I think we have to make it more of a priority from the very beginning uh, when our kids are young. So that by the time they get to be 18 years old, they're like, they, hey, now I have, now I can vote and I know how important it is. Absolutely. You know, way, way, way too many people fought and bled for this country for the right to vote, for That's us, right. for our freedoms, and we have to respect that. That's right. right. And uh, you're one that's serving our, co our country and our Texas now, you're part of the National Guard. I'm, I'm the, the Texas State Guard. The Texas, Texas State, State Guard. Guard. And, you know, I, I had thought about it for a long time, and when I became chairman of the Defense and Veterans Affairs Committee, I just felt, I had filled, filled out my paperwork years before, and kids were kind of small, and it was, I couldn't make it work, but I just felt, you know, I wanted to do it, so I joined up, and I'm glad I did. And, um, and, and so, as a chairman of the committee, I have oversight of the, of the military department, and, and so I work with them very closely. But also as a member of the State Guard, I mean, you know, you feel an extra sense of responsibility to do what you can. You know, they're not going to deploy me, you know, to Ukraine. The State Guard stays here in Texas. The National Guard can be deployed. We back up the National Guard. That's what we do. And, and so, you know, I, I'm, I'm dealing with these guys, and I'm thinking, I know. The likelihood is some of our Texans, some of our Texas National Guard at some point may well be de deployed because I know we're already starting to send military forces to beef up the NATO allies that are, that are next to Ukraine and in, the, in that area. So it's a, it's a dangerous world, man, and, and these people are all people who signed up to try to, you know, um, preserve freedom and democracy. And when people don't go vote, to me, it's almost like an insult to those in the military that are willing to do that for us. That's the way I look at it. No, you're correct. You're absolutely correct. And we all have to do our part. Yeah. And time comes with that. You know, something like you said, you know, I, I waited till my kids were grown for me to yeah. come inside. People yeah. need to do that. Yeah. We, have to, we have to give back to the community. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, there was and this no is an easy way to do it. Go vote. And decide if you, because if you go vote, Paul, I'm telling you, then you're going to study things harder. You're going to pay more attention. You're going to care about who is in all these offices, right? And and we will have a better society because of it. Absolutely. And, you know, before we started this, you, you were talking about also the water issue mm -hmm. that happened here, the radio, and yeah. how, how you were dealing yeah, with I mean, issues there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a couple of things. One was uh, I drove up. I set up a meeting Friday. We went up to Austin. I took the superintendent because uh, 40 of our schools were being affected. They were having to shut them down. Well, when the school is shut down, the state will, will cut off certain funding that you get from the state. So we needed to go ask for a waiver, what we call a waiver, so that we wouldn't be penalized. So I set up a meeting with the Commissioner of Education, Mike Morath. We met in my office at the Capitol, had the superintendents and their team, and we laid it out for them and, and said, look, you know, we can't control that there's this issue with water not being, you know, uh, at the schools. We can't send kids there. I mean, and so thankfully we, we had a good meeting. He agreed. He gave us the waivers. Laredo's going to get that money. The Laredo schools are not going to be penalized. And they shouldn't be because it's not their fault. And he said, go ahead and do virtual learning, go do distance learning um, until the water situation is fixed. I'm not going to penalize you. You're going to get your money. And so I was very happy with that. At the same time, uh, we're working with the Texas Water Development Board because we have, we, we've approved in the legislature a lot of money that can be used for water infrastructure around the state of Texas, with cities and counties and so forth. We have some grant programs, we have some low, uh, zero interest loan programs, et cetera. And also at the federal level, they passed the, the infrastructure bill, and I know Texas is getting a bunch of money from that as well. So we've encouraged the city, and, and uh, this Friday is a deadline to submit applications. And so we've been encouraging them very, very strongly to get those applications in by Friday. Uh, and, and hopefully that way we can at least continue to bring, some, to bring down some additional money from the state and the Fed to help with the infrastructure here. Uh, and uh, we've got to fix it. I mean, I can't do it. The city has to do it. But, you know, they've got to jump on that and fix it. We shouldn't be having these problems. Absolutely. You know, that's what, that's what true leadership is. You saw a problem and you started, you went after it yeah. and tried to fix it. That's, that's, what, that's what we need. Um, you know, I want to thank you for doing that for Laredo and also Senator Safarini yes. and also State Rep. Uh, Tracy King. Tracy King, King because all, all three of you in guys that. were involved in, in pushing this forward and, yeah. and she's been very vigilant on Facebook talking yeah. about everything else. It's not, how can I say, it's not your own problem, but you're all caring for Laredo. Well, and this was something that whatever yeah. happened, it happened, you know, we have old pipes here in Laredo, but we have to maintain having a car, you yeah. know. 
that oil light goes on, hey, go change the oil. And yeah. the person keeps on doing it, all of a sudden, boop, it's gone. The, you know, you've got to keep, you got to keep tabs on it. That's, that's the most important part, or certainly one of the most important parts of our infrastructure is the, is the delivery of water, right? As Senator Safarini said, the water is life, and she's right. So you've got to keep, keep tabs on that to make sure, to your point, like your car. Hey, you're keeping tabs on your car, what's working, make sure that, you know, you have the right amount of oil, you got water in the radiator, etc. Because if you don't, it'll break down. So they, they've got to stay on top of that, that infrastructure and, and keep tabs on it. Okay, well, looks like this over here is, is wearing out. We've got to replace this valve or we've got to replace, replace this pipe or whatever. You've got to keep tabs on that. It's too important. I, I hope that what has happened doesn't ever happen again. Absolutely. Absolutely. And once more, uh, we're going to, because we're running out of time yeah. to have that meeting. But remember, folks, tomorrow is voting day. Please exercise the right to vote. Research all your candidates. Look them over. Find out what they've done, and then take you know take your pick. Yeah. And that's you know. And uh, we wish you the best of luck. Like as as always, you've always been been a friend. And uh, there's a lot of issues that. And I've seen you fight, especially with some other issues that we yeah. we've had with you know, especially with uh, with parental alienation. And yeah. we've done it. We've you've done it. You all done a great job. And I think it's going to change. We're going to keep trying. And we're, keep we're, trying. We're, we're, trying. We're, making, we're making progress for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Once more, Representative, thank you. Thank you, brother. And good luck for tomorrow. Well, let's say the harder you work, the better your luck. So we're working hard. Absolutely. Yeah. Folks, uh, we'll leave you with this. You all stay safe and be well.